Hello everybody, my name is Mr. Craven, and welcome back to Home Safety Hotline. Yeah, in the last video, we got the 100% accuracy uh, promotion ending. Um, and so I thought I would check out what happens if we give everybody the wrong advice. So under options now, I have the unemployment immunity uh, ability, always display accuracy, and add button to skip call wait time. And I also think that I can change how the windows look. Oh, sick. I realized that there was arachnophobia mode and stuff. Yeah, so here's the default theme. I like office cooler. It really gives me that, like, Windows 98 feel. Ooh, this one's nice too. Let's do this. No, uh, office cooler. Uh, so yeah, let's figure out what happens if Oh yeah, the junior superior or supervisor options. Cute. Uh, let's see what happens if we tell everybody the wrong stuff. Um, then also after that, we'll do the uh, unemployment ending. And then the art book. Yeah. Cool. Let's do it. John here again. Here we go. I got beef with you. Your people gave me bad info. What you sent us didn't have anything to do with our problems. I'll be sure to tell our friends not to be bother calling. Oh no, less work for me. That's sad. Uh -oh. I don't want to get anyone in trouble, but I called recently about some noises I was hearing, and the info I was sent seems to be incorrect, as I just found a family of mice in my attic. I'm so sorry. I'm sure you folks get really busy and mistakes happen. Just thought I'd give you a, a tap and let you know. Oh, she was very polite about it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Look at that accuracy. Mmm. Love it. I'm great at my job. So, this is when I start getting emails from Mike3. You don't know me, but I used to have your job. You are in danger. Quit today before it's too late. You don't know enough. Uh, it's not too late to quit freely. Trust me. So, when we get calls from people saying, I called last week and they gave me the wrong info, that's Mike. He gave them the wrong info. And then whenever I show you guys the unemployment ending, I think it explains why he talks like this. Yeah. Cool. Let's keep going. Oh, hi, Hank. Hank here. That's strike two with you people. First you tell me there's nothing, then you send me the wrong information! I did what your info package said to do, and now there's even more critters in my yard! They're all staring at me now! They want me to... They want me to climb inside the tunnel. I... I must go inside. I must pay for my sins. Fuck, did the gophers get him? Yes, yeah, so that's one of the guys that got bad info from Mike 3. <laughs> hey, yeah. Hell yeah. That brain sent me some info when I was asking for some lawn care. Now my whole family's sick to our stomachs and itchy as all get out. <laughs> Thanks for nothing, jerk. <laughs> this is the guy with ticks. It was like, ah, oh, my kid's being lazy. Actually, no, he's sick. You're an asshole. Bless you, my man. I think this is the guy that has black mold. But I'm telling everybody they have bees. Because... <laughs> <in my, laughs> I'm such an idiot. In my mind... It was, it's, not the bees, not the bees, from the Wicker Man. 
So I'm telling everybody they have bees. Because uh, the only person that actually has bees is on the very final day. So I know that's like a good answer to give everybody. Uh -oh. Hello, employee. Supervisor Carol here. We've received complaints that some of the answers that you have been providing have been inaccurate. I urge you to think more carefully on the answers you provide before we are forced to terminate. You've been warned. You can't fire me. My dad owns the company, actually. Hello, Supervisor Carol here again. Oh, We've it didn't. Your permissions. It didn't kick me out. Okay, so I guess I get to blast through the entire week. Hey, yeah, thanks a bunch for the terrible advice you sent You're welcome. me. My kid just fell through the frickin' wall from all the damage they dealt, and we found out on our own what was going on. See you never. Damn. It's still crawling in the walls! Ugh. Those instructions you said didn't work at all! I'm going stir crazy here! I still haven't been able to sleep! I hope you all rot! That's not very nice. It wasn't Bob from accounting! <laughs> it wasn't Bob at all! I thought I'd scurry away! Why didn't you warn me? What is this nonsense info you sent me? Why is it growing bigger? Get away! Stay back! So this guy had the desk hob. I guess it metamorphosized into a bogger and attacked. Sorry, dude. Uh -oh. Ugh, that info you sent me was useless. These cleaning crooks are still breaking into my house and taking who knows what. The cops won't help, and you're useless. So thanks for nothing. Rude? Uh, I don't know what this weird info you sent me means, but I tried it and, uh, it didn't fix the faucet. I'm calling a plumber. Thanks a lot for wasting my time. You're welcome, Peter. This was the guy with the frozen pipe. Hey, yeah, this hey. is Fred Pinball. I'm calling to lodge a complaint against your place of business. I have never seen such a big old mess left behind by your pest control team. Just tons of twigs, sticks, and Pebbles, sod, and I ain't putting up with it no more. I got sawdust coming out of my drawers here. I had to grab you by the goober and smack you around till next Sunday. Now, <laughs> what's you gonna do? What's you gonna do to make this right? <laughs> I love this one so much. So I accidentally cut this one out of the previous video. So I'm gonna keep this one in. I'm still kind of confused what this thing is. Is it just a prank caller? Because at the end of the week, whenever somebody says like, Hey, how'd you get in here? It sounds like it attacks him. And you hear some like squeaking. So I'm, I'm kind of confused what these things are. Yeah, I got a comment saying that I had cut Fred Pinball out. So thank you for bringing that up. I thought that I had left all these in. Uh oh. It's horrible. I followed your instructions, but it's not what you said it would be. I think it's angry at me. The stair slug? No! Yeah, the stair slug got her. I notice I'm not getting a call back for each one. I guess just like the violent ones or something. Uh. Hi? I, uh. Please hold. This was the memory wisp. Hello? Oh. I was told to call this number to ask about my problem. The wall in my bedroom doesn't look right near the bottom. The bottom of the wall has some cracks or maybe it's peeling. I'm not sure. 
I have a cat named Whiskers, and sometimes he likes to sharpen his claws at the couch, but he would never do that to the wall. He knows just how naughty that would be. He knows. So, remember Whiskers. Yeah. Please Whiskers hold. the cat. Keep that in mind. Hello? I followed every instruction your people sent me, but I'm still getting cracks on my wall. Uh, my daughter is called Pest Control. She told me not to call you anymore for help. I'm sorry. Goodbye. Okay, so we got a so we got an email from Mike Three. They give you access to more info, didn't they? I warned you. If you end up like me, join me in this hole. They haven't found me yet. It's safe here. And there's a little picture of a hole down there. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, cool. Let's keep going. Yes. Let's keep going. Okay, so I went through... There we go. I went through Wednesday again. Damn. <laughs> That's a lot of sixes. Uh-oh. So now it'll let me, yeah, here we go. Introducing our new office pet, Whiskers, the cat. So they go help that lady and just steal her cat. And if you get, if you get it wrong, she doesn't mention anything about Whiskers. That's, that's fucking insane. This game is like so intricate and has so much lore in detail to it. I love it. Look at that. I gotta use horseshoe. Oh boy. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna turn... Oh wait, also... This is important. I can tell this is made in Unity because you can see the, the skybox is a square. The Mystery of Mice. Mice. One of humanity's oldest friends and oldest enemies. From the Black Plague to the shelves of our pet stores, mice have lived alongside humans for centuries. And just like humans, mice may even be evolving alongside us as well. This is a mus musculus otherwise known as the common house mouse. And this is Mus musculus loquentis, otherwise known as the smart mouse, a newly discovered species known for its uniquely colored iris, and more importantly, its increased intelligence. Mice have brains smaller than peanuts, and yet, Modern science has observed they are capable of thinking quite intelligently. And in the case of the smart mouse, perhaps even capable of communication. With the help of modern computer technology, today's scientists have been able to interpret the previously indecipherable squeaks of a smart mouse and have discovered what seems to be hidden messages within. Let's take a listen. of evolution, or are we just hearing things that aren't there? Do mice and men have more in common than previously thought? Well, I suppose that's what makes this a science mystery. Yeah, so keep that in mind. It'll make more sense once I show you the unemployment ending. But for now, let's go and blast out the rest of the mistake calls.
And I wonder if I can mess up the trial at the end and get fired. Or if they'll do something different to me if I mess those up. Yeah, anyways, I'll cut to the next thing. Oh, here we go. It's in my bedroom right now. It's watching me. I, I think it wants something from me. It's coming closer. It's coming for me. Oh, God! Okay, so Mike 3 gave him wrong info. So he called me back about, it was one of, I think it was like one of the Hobbs, but then of course I told him it was bees. And so I think it's turned turn into a boggart. Hi, so I've been sleeping on the couch and now the pointy things are on the blanket I'm using and my legs are burning now. I have no idea what the point was of that stupid info packet you sent me, but it's definitely coming from me. Oops. Guess I have to shower every day now. Thanks for making me figure this out on my own. Yeah, this is the guy that had bed teeth. But he only showers once a week. Ew. Yeah, bed teeth. So it just like spreads wherever he goes. Ugh. And this is the false beat. This is the false beat guy. But you got bees. Yeah, I'll cut to the next uh, callback. What kind of business are you running? I took the advice you sent us and nothing has changed. Damn, Belinda. Now I'm about to go into the attic myself to see if I can't find out for myself what's happening. So the least you could do is stay on the line to help. Yeah, that was the attic gnome, I believe. Should have left them alone. So this is the lady that called because uh, her child was taken by the false artifact. And that's her callback. Oof. That info you sent was garbage. <laughs> the Hi, are getting larger, and now the basement is flooding. You can tell your supervisor that you were no help whatsoever. I'm taking this into my own hands. Oh, supervisor. Uh, yeah, this was the, I think the found, what, what was it called? The foundation hob? Or the fracture hob? Yeah. It was... That was his callback. Oh. Well, I got good news and bad news. Bad news is the info you sent wasn't any help at all, so, uh... Thanks for that. No problem. Good news is I found Goblin. Oh, good. She freaking came crawling out of that hole with a big bump on her head or something, so I'm taking her to the vet now. But, uh, yeah. Thanks for trying, I guess. Oh, well, he's nice. So this is the one where his dog was digging up everything. And they have unicorn fungus. Oh, I love that picture. The info. Uh-oh. The info you sent. No good. <laughs> Can't sleep. While it's watching me, I can't. I can't. It's... it's still out there, little creep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's being watched by the night goblin? Or night gnome? Yeah, being watched by this guy. <laughs> Love it. Hi. Now, thanks to the info you sent me not being effective in the slightest, this living room plant situation has only gotten worse. Now, the floorboards and walls are starting to groan under the weight. There's something hiding in tall grass by the couch, and I don't think it's friendly. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's moving. Oh, it's moving. 
I think this was the travel gnome. Yeah. Uh, these gardens, in addition uh, to introduction of a variety of dangerous pests, can also create foundational problems. Uh -oh. What is happening to my basement? I followed your instructions, but it's not just an animal roaring down here. This whole place looks like some huge cave. How is this possible? This was the cellar grotto. I guess something I guess something was in the grotto. It wasn't the faucet. It wasn't the faucet at oh. all. It was this thing inside of me? What's grown in my garden? Saw the x-ray. It's horrible. It's disgusting. Please, I'm in so much pain. Get it out of me. Tell the doctors to get it out of me. He ate the false beat. Oof. The holes, there's holes oh. everywhere on my face. Oh. The doctors will help. They're trying to take me somewhere. Please, you have to help me. Have to... Uh, so this was the guy with the fey flu. Holes on his face and stuff. Oh. Oof. That one I ain't like. That looks like skin itch. Hey, I called last week about some noises in my house, and after following the instructions you sent me, they still seem to be happening. I already told you guys what was happening, but uh, the short story is that every night I'm hearing clattering noises coming from the kitchen. Please hold. So you had talked to Mike 3. He's already been fired. I think it's bees. Talk to you later. <laughs> Faith oh. bit my hand. I was just turning off one of our lamps and it, it latched on and bit me. What was that thing? Oh, why do I feel sick? Am I going to die? It's back. Get away, you nasty thing. This was the guy that had the lamp sprite, I believe. I guess he tried to turn the lamp off. And it did not like that. Yeah. Do not under any circumstances turn off the lamp or attempt to reach your hand inside. Oof. Oh. You were no help. I I won't let her stay underground with that thing alone. I'm going after her. Tell my mother I love her. All right, I love you, mom. I love your mom too. Uh, that was the floor vines. It took his daughter, or floor roots. Yeah, it took his daughter. So I guess he's going in after her. You can't help me. The doctors can't help me. Uh oh. The mirror nymph got her. Oof. So I guess, like, did it just run away with her face? That is not a direct harm. Hmm. She sounded very distraught. Do it. I think I think I need to go inside. The wind feels so nice. Please hold. Please you have Here to help go. my husband. He's listening to the lights and he's following them now. What do I do? The instructions you sent didn't do anything. He's walking into the... Oh, no. Stop! Stop walking! No! Come back now! Damn. So, 
are not dangerous to humans unless listened to. Refrain from listening to their whispers and following their directions. Damn. So I wonder what happens if you actually follow them, because that did not sound good. Yep. The person trying to reach you cannot connect to this earthly plane. Please try again later. Yeah, she was taken by portal. Damn. Is it uh portal okay, uh, they additionally cause drafts into okay. I don't think it says anything about what happens if you go through it. I think we're just gone. Uh oh. Those Satanists are still at large. Your instructions didn't help Didless squat. Diddly squat. Now they're covering my house in vines and hiding in the trees. I can see their glowing evil eyes looking at me out there. Thanks for nothing. You know what? I'm going to take care of this myself. Every time they say that, I'm like, uh oh, you're dead. So this is, um, her son was killed by a sprig tree. Yeah. And now she's getting sprig vines. Oof. Yes. Hi again. Hi. I'm calling for the last time to tell you that the advice you sent us was useless. So, thanks for nothing. Just the other night, I heard singing again. So, I've sought business elsewhere. I have a private security team investigating the greenhouse as we speak. So this lady had the false flower, and so that security team she has hired probably found the flower, and it's fucking them up. Yeah. Uh, spraying toxic chemical known to cause blindness and loss of sight. Oof. Uh-oh. The trash. So much trash. Is the horde lady. consumed us. I live the trash. I breathe the trash. It will bury us. Yeah, this is the lady they called and was like, I think some homeless guy is sneaking into our house and putting trash everywhere. But really, it was the horde. Uh, yeah, the horde. Damn. Uh-oh. This one got attacked by the soap sprite. I guess if you get stung by it, spread deadly diseases such as Fey flu. He has Fey flu now. Oh God. Hey, yeah. Thanks for nothing. Oh, you're welcome. I called again recently about some kitchen noises, and your people once again sent me bad info. Maybe vet your people better. I'll be going for help elsewhere. Now we're having power outages, so who knows what this thing in our house has got into now. Goodbye. So he had a common hob, but now he's saying he's having power outages, which means it's a full-on bugger now. Uh, Electric outages, yeah. So they have a full-on... Bogger. Oof. So, uh, I, I think something may have died inside my desk. It stinks to high heavens and something. Please hold. It was bees. Uh oh. Hi. Um, all of my Merlot is ruined because <laughs> you're overpaid gave me bad info. Now I have a killer headache and I still have a nasty pest problem to deal with. I'm just calling to let you know you did a bad job and you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> You've got red wine on your hands. You have to live with that. Oh no, all your wine. Oh. Yeah, she she's getting fucked up by a wine sprite. 
Oh no, she's gonna get Fey Flu too. <gasps> oh, that sucks. Uh oh. You idiots. <laughs> it didn't work. The instructions didn't work. My babies, my little babies are paralyzed. Something happened. Their skin turned hard. They're bleeding that that stuff. Please tell the doctors to give me my babies back. Tell them to give them back. So I think Ruth is the one that had the wood secretion. They're bleeding that stuff. Oh. Yeah. Uh, they interpreted. Oh, shut up. They interpreted uh, that goo as a sweet candy like smell to them. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, that was gross. So, he had a spriggan problem. He said that he could see little things inside the trees looking at him. So I guess he went... Yeah, it got in and it touched him. And so now, he is a spriggan tree. This happened to him. Damn. <laughs> My brother has been taken care of, and you no longer need to concern yourself with our household. Good day. So this lady had autumn vines, and it makes you feel like just blissful, but also dizzy. And when she says taking care of her brother, I think she probably... <laughs> or now he's also infected? Yeah, uh, blissful dizzying effects. Damn. This Oop. info you said didn't help. And, and this family that claims to be mine is trying to have me committed. Where am I? Where's my real family? I need to get back to my real family. No, get off of me. Get off. You can't take me. I need you to back. Damn. So this one was the neighbor's door. No, neighbor's doorway. Yeah, perceived missing memories in humans who come to the other side. So she walked through this thing. Yeah, oof. Some of these are brutal. Last week to ask why my home here Last week. is having issues, and nothing's changed after following the instructions you sent me. <sighs> Be quiet. I know your teeth hurt, but Daddy's on the phone right now. Anyway, we're still. Please hold. Yeah. So last week, Mike sent them the wrong info, and he's fired now. Uh. So I'm gonna go and tell him it's bees. I know it's a leprechaun, but it's bees. Uh oh. That leprechaun just fucked them up. Yeah. So it was eating part of their heater. So, uh, homeowners have metallic medical implants such as braces, crowns, or joint replacements. So, that's, that child sounded too young for braces. But, I, I guess that leprechaun... just fucked them up. Damn.
Nope. Your people sent us instructions, but nothing we did worked. It's not pranksters. I don't know what it is. But I have a chance to take it by surprise. Is that it? Buddy, that was a troll. Yeah, this is the guy that was like, these pranksters are stealing my wife's clothes. And I hear a whoopee cushion. Yeah, but it was a, it was a troll, my guy. Ah, oh, network error, of course. Oh, it's Sheila here Oh, again. hi Sheila. I called recently to ask about some buzzing in my cupboard and the instructions I was sent didn't work. I still hear the, the the buzzing, and it's giving me the most awful headache. Oh, oh it's in my teeth! It's in my teeth! <laughs> so, this lady had a tea sprite. And now she has the Fae Flu. Damn, the Fae Flu is just getting all these people. Uh oh. Tell me how to get rid of it. The instructions you sent didn't work and smell so foul. I'm hearing angry voices coming from the walls. They keep telling me to eat it. Please. I don't want to eat it. Don't make me eat This one has the Fay Feast. Oh. Gross. Hey, Paul. Hey, yeah, Paul here again. Thanks a bunch for nothing, pal. I followed the instructions you sent, and they did jack. I ain't got no wink of sleep. My kids are breaking out in all sorts of rashes. See you never. So I think Paul just had bed bugs. Like, this is the most tame out of all the callbacks we've basically gotten. He's at bed bugs, my guy. Hello? Uh oh. Carla? I guess she found her... I think it's, uh... Whistling Mushrooms. Whistling Fungi. So what happens if you... Yeah, it doesn't say what happens if you actually touch them. Hi. My husband and I followed through on the information that you sent us, but we're still not feeling great. I've been having an extra terrible vivid sleep paralysis, and my husband has started using a machine for sleep apnea now, so that's lovely. I think we'll be getting in touch with the new doctor, so I suppose we're no longer in need of your services. Have a good day. Uh, they have a bed hag. Yeah. Uh, shortness of breath, sometimes sleep paralysis. Hello? Hello? This lady with the puka. I need help. The instructions didn't help. I don't know what to do. My poor puppy Meatball, there's... There's two of him. I found his rotting body. I, I don't know what the other one is doing. He's watching me closely. He's standing up. Meatball, bad boy. Get down. Stop scaring mommy. Yeah, that lady had the puka. So silly. What are these things? So, somebody said they're, uh, like prank calling guinea pigs. And it does sound like a guinea pig, but what exactly is this thing? 
Because it calls every week. Or every day. But like, even now replaying it, I'm like, what are you? Day is ending, please hold. So, this is going to take us to the ritual. So I'm going to, once it, yeah, once I get to the ritual part, I'm going to turn off the unemployment immunity. Here we go. So this, the answer is, this is the only answer that's bees. So now I gotta, they follow their queen, huh? You're a raccoon. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, I'm gonna answer all these wrong and see if they'll fire me. Okay. Hello, Supervisor Carol here. We've been watching you closely. For all this time, you have been providing excellent and accurate answers to our callers. These acts will not go unrewarded. Okay, so even if I answer them all wrong, that you have qualified promotion in progress. It's gonna give me the promotion ending. Which we've seen this. Uh so let me cut to Hi! Let me cut to uh, getting the getting fired ending. Here we go. Hello, employee. Supervisor Carol here. We've been watching you for some time, and I must say that we have been rather disappointed in your performance here. Many of our callers' lives have been altered for the worse thanks to your negligent answers. Your failure to treat your work here with the gravity it deserves has unfortunately forced us to make a very difficult choice in regards to your continued employment at HSH. Effective immediately, your employment here has been terminated. We wish you the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. Bye. Oh. I'm an unemployed little mouse. Yeah, so since she's like a like a bog witch, I think is what she is, she turns us into a mouse. And that explains why Mike 3 types or like kind of like communicates the way he does and lives in a small hole. Then also, I think he's hiding out in the office. And so that's why they stole that lady's cat so we can hunt down the employees. Yeah. Whiskers. The only... So I, I get all that now. Uh, the only thing that I still am unsure about is what are the things that are calling me? The, the prank calls. Like, are they just prank calls? Like I'm really, I'm really unsure. Um, here, actually, let, I want to pull up yesterday's video. Them for okay. Here we go. I'm gonna turn myself off for a second. Here's old me. Both food and something else. This fucker.
yeah, so... Whatever it is makes this, like, squeaking sound. And it's like, hey, 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 get it. Like, the person whose house they broke into or office. I'm so... Con like, I'm, I'm trying to piece it together live while I'm recording right now. Are they a former employee or were they just a prankster? They got, they just got turned. I'm so confused because then they call back on Friday. Let's see if I can scrub through. Yeah, there they are. Oh, God. So what are they? That's, like, that's the only thing I'm still really confused about. But yeah, all right. Um, Let's go through the art book. 30 pages, damn. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Nick Lives, or Lives, the creator of Home Safety Hotline. If you're here reading this, it hopefully means you're invested enough in this game to be curious about its development. If so, you come to the right place. This is a peek into the game's art development process and all the human messiness that entails. I hope you enjoy this thorough and admittedly indulgent look into what went into making Home Safety Hotline the game it is right now. I actually am very invested. Like I've had, I think I've put in over eight hours into playing this. <laughs> it's really good. Influences. Oh, cute. Advanced D&D &D Monster Manual. Uh, when I was maybe 10 or 12 years old, my grandmother gifted me a Dungeons & Dragons monster manual she picked up from a thrift store. Immediately, I fell in love with this book, despite having no idea what its purpose was. I would scour its pages, constantly learning everything I could about its many, many imaginative creatures. Since I started developing games, I've very much wanted to make a game about the pure joy of experienced... Uh, I experienced flipping through a bestiary. Uh, I always pronounced it bestiary. Hmm. Uh, many games have featured in-game bestiaries, uh, but rarely is it important to actually read through them in much detail. Before we continue. Bestiary. Thought so. Bestiary. Yeah, all right. Cute. Uh, bestiary. My first attempt at crafting a game based around my love for bestiaries was a game aptly titled Bestiary, a fantasy game in which you would play as a researcher testing the dead bodies of monster corpses with various magical implements in an attempt to write an accurate bestiary entry for them, noting properties as you went. This prototype never really made it past the conceptual stage with uh, these concepts or concept art pieces and a crude interactable UI <clears throat> being as far as I took it. Sorry, I had to clear my throat. It wasn't fully, I wasn't fully happy with this direction as it was a rather art heavy, uh, seemed too generic and felt little like the activity that inspired it. I think something like this, but in like playing it like how you play, uh, the coroner game. The mortuary assistant. Yeah. A game like this, but with like the mortuary assistant style gameplay. I think that'd be sick. Oh, that speaking of sick, that's awesome. Uh, new magic. Skip ahead a while and my wife and I wind up both getting jobs as actors at a local fantasy theme park called Evermore Park, in which she played a uh, playful fairy and I voiced and puppeteered the big monster called the Fey King. The park gave a lot of improvis uh, improvisational freedom to its actors and my wife and I both wound up really stretching some creative muscles or stretching some creative muscles while we were there. Every day we'd uh, every day we'd be crafting up stories on the spot for guests and improvising scenes with other actors. Eventually, many of the actors quit or were let go, but the park left a substantial creative void within many of the people who worked there, myself included. 
As time went on, I sorely missed uh, performing and improvising with other actors, and the constant but rewarding creative challenge of tail weaving and lore crafting on the fly. 1-800-BESTIARY. Fun ghoul. Uh, yeah, I'll need to move. <laughs> fun ghoul, and then fun ghoul. <laughs> Uh, during the pandemic, as things felt increasingly dire and lonely, I wrote up a new design document entitled 1-800-BESTIARY, a game about answering calls for a hotline that prescribes solutions to various kinds of monster infestations. The hope was, with the caller angle, I'd be able to wrangle a bunch of actor friends into this fun and quick project, and maybe we'd all get a chance to recreate some of the creative spark, and I'd finally get to scratch my childhood bestiary itch. Alas, other priorities came up with other projects I was developing, so 1-800-BESTIARY remained on the back burner for another three years. Uh, analog Horror At the end of 2022, I released a horror game called Night Signal, which I think I still need to play. I don't, I don't think I ever covered that one. Uh, that I'd been trying to finish for the past few years, and while the game did perform great financially, it sure seemed to resonate with those in YouTube's comment sections. Because I'm a weak human who craves validation. <laughs> Same. Same here. I read each and every comment as it came in. I'd see people say Night Signal reminded them of something called Analog Horror. I gave in to curiosity and started going down this Analog Horror rabbit hole. Once again, I immediately fell in love. Here was this incredibly fascinating subgenre of horror that oozed with creativity and its secondhand approach to storytelling all while being wrapped in a instantly recognizable and nostalgic aesthetic. Gemini Home Entertainment, in particular, quickly became a favorite, with its more subdued approach in presenting its horrors so matter-of-factly, buried inside infomercial videos about mundane topics like wildlife and camping. Uh, the Lunar Archives. Oh, you can actually see, like, Tube Creature. Like, that's definitely, like, art style of the game we played. Uh, Lunar Archives. During my newfound love affair with Analog Horror, it occurred to me at some point that the genre would be a perfect match for 1-800-Bestiary's gameplay concept, and right away I revived the pitch and started on crafting a working prototype. I settled quick on a Windows 95-inspired interface, since Analog Horror was frequently channeling 90s-era media formats, and it felt like the only natural uh, digital equivalent. I only crafted this quick proof-of-concept piece before building the interface in engine and iterating uh, from there. Hmm. Uh, the new working title was now Lunar Archives, as I tentatively decided the new concept would revolve around aliens. At this time, the idea was that the aliens slash monsters could be from anywhere in the world, since that opened up the largest number of creative possibilities. I struggled to come up with interesting monsters in such a broad setting, however, and it didn't uh, really feel scary yet to read about monsters that live nowhere near me. It lives in your house. The bestiaries' entries increasingly felt like they needed to be more personal to be scary, so I decided the monsters should all be from things that live in your house. Out of curiosity, I asked my wife one day if she knew of any folklore about monsters that live in your house. The answer was goblins. Ah, hell yes. Now we're talking. I excitedly grabbed one of my sketchbooks so I could doodle up some weird gobos in the new, more fitting, uh, wait, in the new, more fitting title idea. Yeah, so home safety hotline, strange things happen in your home. Analog horror meets papers, please. Which I actually still need to play that. I never played papers, please. Gobbin around. As soon as I started as soon as I started reading up on house goblin folklore, I instantly felt like a kid again, and monster ideas just started flowing out. The first monster design I did was the first hob photo. Yeah, this is the common hob. I dove right into Photoshop and started painting my interpretation of a little goblin into a photograph of a living room, Trevor Hederson style. I gave him a little troll doll style tufts and some simple slits for eyes trying to evoke a Guillermo del Toro-esque spirit of grounded, scary, but whimsical. Hob Anatomy After drawing my first hob, I got a little carried away in my sketchbook, dreaming up different varieties of these weird little guys. 
and detailing how they would function. Different hair and false faces would denote different species. It's like, yeah, slits for eyes. So there's calm, alert. I hate how the eyes come out of the slits like that. Uh, different hair and false faces would denote different species and bring them closer in line with the big nose goblin designs everyone is familiar with. So yeah, she had skin fully transformed. And then you can see like the fake nose. Weird. Shedding when transformed or transforming. Hmm. Fae for days. It didn't take long for me to go deep diving into Wikipedia to discover even more stories of Fae and begin interpreting them under the lens of my newfound design ethos, treating each creature as though it were simply some kind of bizarre animal. Love that. The idea for the inflatable trolls came from a mix of between the folklore of trolls and spriggans, where spriggans were said to be small creatures that could grow to enormous size. Huh. As I read this, it made me think of a puffer fish, and I laughed as I tried to picture what such a creature would look like when deflated. I gave this ability to the trolls because folklore usually portrayed them as too big to enter people's homes, and spriggans felt like they had plenty of distinctive qualities already. Why do I do this myself? <laughs> when drawing monsters, frequently I would find myself having to paint the entire monster in order to get certain poses to feel accurate, before erasing parts of them later to hide them behind some furniture or blurring them into oblivion. And then, of course, uh, they would be crushed into tiny pixels by the end anyway. Less is more, after all, but I still had to draw the more to get there. Silly Scares I'm scared by lots of stupid, silly things. As such, both humor and horror can feel like one and the same sometimes. When I read the stories about the puka, who pretends to be a horse just to buck people around to scare them for a laugh, <laughs> I thought of what the indoor modern equivalent might be and immediately thought of those viral photos of tiny dogs creepily staring at their owners. This is the result. It might be my proudest artistic achievement. Oh, the puka. Gnome problem. These gnomes in particular may have suffered the most from the reduction in image fidelity when compared to their paintings. So here they here they are in all their high higher definition glory. Uh, check them out. Check out check out them little guys. Yep, there they are. Ice Spriggan spy. The Spriggan by far may be the hardest creature to spot. All throughout development, I've asked playtesters to try and find the Spriggan. No one has found the Spriggan. <laughs> I could consider this a failure on my part as a designer, but instead I left it as is in the final product. Make of this what you will. So now that I actually see it up close, I can see it. Like, here's the body. Here's the neck. Here's the head. Here's the slits for eyes. Or the, this might be the nose. And these are the eyes. Or it's all just one big slit. Troll in focus. The troll is another creature that I painted in far more detail before blurring him to hell and back. So here he is in all of his wrinkly, deflated glory. Love it. Ugh. Boggin' around. The bugger is maybe the most traditionally spooky creature I've designed for HSH, with his uncanny human-like face and long, slender figure. After reading into bogger lore, and finding out they are sort of the forefathers of our modern-day boogeyman, it seemed only fitting to make the bogger more traditionally ghoulish. Good job. Scruffy fellow. Oh. The trash gnome was inspired by a fan suggestion described as Oscar the Grouch, but worse. <laughs> uh, the thought of a puppety creature with a large mouth that lives in trash was too entertaining to pass up. Uh, to create the trash gnome, I took a photo of a raccoon, rearranged the eyes and head to create our scruffy little friend. Oh, its eyes are in its ears. Oh. This is, is once again another creature where I created more uh where I created more than would be seen in the end result. Self rating entries. To source photographs for entries, I would browse free use CCO photography libraries 
for photos that looked like they would be perfect for photographing a monster within. But on occasion, I would stumble upon a photograph that was so intriguing on its own, I would be inspired to write an entry for as is, or for it as is. This photo, for example, by Tasha Kamrowski, was immediately captivating and inspired the mirror nymph entry on its own. I changed the skin tone to up the creep factor slightly, but the photo is otherwise unaltered. That's really good. Hidden in plain sight. Making people question ordinary objects in their home is both quite funny and quite creepy. And that's something these fan-suggested entries, Soap Sprite and Laundry Gnome, exhibit pretty well. I love this guy. So cute. Also, it's realized that the Soap Sprite has ice lids. Sprightly little fellows. The design for sprites was intended to be a mix between mosquitoes and more traditional fairy designs. In general, I am frightened of most flying insects, and so I, want to ha I wanted the idea of having a little fairy in your home to give people like me the shivers. Yeah, ice lits, and then here's like its long sucking mouth. Cute. You're a wizard. The Warlock Remnant is in fact an edited photograph of me wearing a Halloween mask from my childhood along with a cheap vampire costume I had from past Halloweens. Felt cute. Might delete later. Huh. Exclusive deals. <coughs> the concept of coupons came about after I received feedback from demo players asking for more motivation for playing the game well. Since playing the game poorly would net you more interesting content in the form of the consequence calls. I agree. Some of those calls were incredible. Like, just really brutal sounding. I thought uh, that pointless employee discounts for products offered by HSH uh, would make for funny yet lore-heavy content for high-scoring incentives and based the look of the product images off of 90s infomercial ads. Oh, these are the rat hands. A ratty end. Originally, the game over ending was much simpler uh, and to the point, with Carol firing the, firing the player and wiping their memory before sending them on their way. After the promotion ending was written, it was decided to come up with something a little more whimsical for the game over, the, uh, over to better suit the world of HSH. Inspired by uh, Roald Dolls? The witches? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You worthless swine, you scum. And like, they take off their skin. Uh, we came up with the idea that Carol should turn the player into a mouse instead. On the morning of the shoot, I molded these, uh, <laughs> these props from air drying clay, painted them with acrylic paint, and hastily glued some faux craft store fur onto them. David then held these in front of the camera while I filmed the ending of... Uh, film the film the ending on my living room floor. Riddle me this. Originally, the player received their promotion at the end of their shift on Saturday, but it felt a bit too abrupt to go from an otherwise normal workday to the game's fantastical ending in the span of a single call. After a bit of brainstorming, we wound up coming up with a dedicated final trial day where you would be called by cryptic cloaked callers testing your knowledge with riddles, all without having access to to your database or information. You Pace yourself. When the game's ending was written, in order for music to be composed for it early on, this crude animated storyboard, or animatic, was created in order to dictate the pacing and structure of the ending so music would be written for it, or could be written for it. The animatic and music would later also serve to guide the pacing of the actual shoot, with David shouting out, the appropriate cues as we filmed. This is the crown we get at the promotion crown. At the promotion ending. The, uh, the promotion crown was a unique prop I hot glued together out of various craft store materials, including a small wreath, little curvy sticks, and fake mushrooms. Given the player is only getting their first promotion, the materials involved are all crude and common than uh, are all more crude and common than the more lavish crown that the Faye Carol wears. And here she is. Faye's Carol makeup. In addition to playing the role of Carol, Courtney also designed the final makeup and costumed look for Faye Carol in the game's ending cutscene. 
depicting Carol in her truer, more ancient form. In Courtney's own words, I want to look like a proper swamp witch. Good job. Fake Carol's costume. Fake Carol's costume was also pieced together by Courtney herself, utilizing stress netting, faux moss, uh, a stressed back black skirt, and finally topping it all off with a crown fashion from faux twigs and leaves. Looks good. Well, there we go. That is all of Home Safety Hotline. The only thing that I still don't understand is who the prank callers were. So if you have a theory or if you know, leave a comment. <coughs> oh boy. And then one more thing. Uh, shout out to Jacklope Frost for basically giving me the idea for this video. Hey, if you have time, you should go back and play or just look up the callbacks you get for the call or for failing a call. Some are really spooky. Yeah. Uh, very, very good suggestion. Thank you. Uh, by Kitsa, if you hadn't been so obsessed with cheating your way through it, you would have answered some of your questions. Just saying. So when you say cheating your way through it, do you mean restarting so I could get the 100% ending? What do you mean? Because whenever I cheat, I will openly admit that I'm cheating. Like, I've literally showed my cheat engine to get through games. I've acknowledged that I've had to look up guides. So when you say, if you hadn't been so obsessed with cheating your way through. Hmm. Anyways, Conorator, disappointed you cut out the call with Fred Pinball. Yes, I didn't realize I'd cut that out. Thank you for bringing that up. So that's why I'm going to include it in this video. Yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. This has been a Home Safety Hotline. Yeah, this has been a really fun, fun game to play. I haven't done a deep dive on a game like this in a long time. So it was nice to actually get something I could sink my teeth into and just really just discover. Yeah, really great work. If you want to play it yourself, links in the description. Uh, check out my Patreon. I have exclusive content up there. You can watch Revenge of the Colon for free. You don't even have to sign up for the Patreon. Free, no ads down there. Um, Yeah, I think that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all next time.